Cookie Clicker, a game where you click a cookie. Scratch, programming language where you use blocks instead of text to make stuff. Combine those two and you get Cookie Clicker in Scratch. But as we being a Scratch senior developer, making Cookie Clicker in Scratch would be too easy for me. For that reason, I have set a self-imposed limit and the limit is not the time. Every programmer knows that quality is larger than quantity. Hence, I will limit the block count instead. So I will have to focus on making quality code. So first version will be made out of five blocks. The essential thing for every game is that it keeps player amused. But what is that core part of that cookie clicker that make it so fun? That's right, clicking on cookie. Nothing more appealing than watching a virtual number increase every time you do an effortless finger action. First, we need a cookie to click on. Then, we will need a script which increases cookies by one every time you click a cookie. We still have three blocks left. Using those three blocks, I'll make the spinning white border, then modify background and game is finished. Next is 50 block version. It feels something is missing. What is the feature we could add that would be more appealing than clicking on button? Upgrades. The thing which is even more fun than clicking a button. Clicking another button which will increase your efficiency of clicking the first button. Unbelievable, I know right. But first, let's give our game a makeover so it doesn't look like the it was drawn by kindergartners. I'll add click animation and finally we can start making upgrades. The first one will be click upgrade which will give you extra cookies per click. But wait, it isn't that simple. Every master clicker know that every time you buy an upgrade its cost increases. But that's not all again, every master clicker knows that there is always an upgrade which gives you currency over time. Yeah, that means you will be clicking a button to get enough cookies to buy an upgrade which will give you cookies over time so you don't have to click cookie anymore. It makes complete sense, yes. And now with only block left, I will add click sound effect. Oh, and one more thing. Perfect. Our goal is to make it more fun. So, what features are we missing? First, in original game, there are 20 different building types for generating cookies over time. Well, now we have only one. We need to implement more. If you're a junior Scratch developer, you will probably duplicate the upgrade sprites multiple times. But that's the classic rookie mistake because that will skyrocket the block count. Instead, we are going to use clones. Wrong! Senior Scratch developers will never use clones if they doesn't have to. Instead, we are going to use pen extension for manually rendering costumes. Now, we need a way to store data for each building. And of course, we will use lists. For now, we need lists building costs. The starting cost for each building type, building count, how much buildings of each type you have purchased, building multiplier, how much will upgrades multiply the production for that building type, and base production. Before implementing their logic, we need a way to display those list of values. And there is no better way other than text engine. And with just 38 blocks, we have a way to render any needed text. Now, try to spot the mistake. That's right, once you reach serious bugs, it isn't important do you have only cookie less or more. 
much better. But wait, if we don't use clones, how are we supposed to click on stuff? Things drawn with pen cannot register clicks. But that's only what clone user lobby wants you to believe. There are actually two ways you can make this. But the one I'm gonna use is using AABB versus AABB collision. If you don't know what AABB is, I can blame you. So after getting conveniently backpacked script, now we have working collisions. Now we can create a custom block for calculating total cookie per second value and use that value to generate cookies. The last crucial part are the upgrades because, uh, well, numbers doesn't lie. After I acquired all upgrades icons, we need to display those upgrades. First, I'll start by copying the scripts for building. But wait, didn't I said just before that copying the same code is classic rookie mistake? But the actual mistake here is not believing in me. I know what I'm doing. I am senior scratch developer after all. So now we need to make them actually work. In Cookie Clicker, there are various types of upgrades, but I will keep only ones which directly increase power of one building. Nobody cares if you each 37th grandma gives you 0.3% production bonus to wizard towers. There are also upgrades which increase your production based on achievements count. But we were keeping only essential things. The next thing we need to implement may sound complex to you, but it's child play for a senior scratch developer like me. Each building needs to have 7 upgrades, but you unlock every upgrade only once you buy a certain number of that buildings. Every scratch junior developer would use a lot of conditions to implement that, but remember, we can only have 500 blocks, so how should it be done then? Using more lists, of course. We need 3 lists. First, Upgrade Tier Cost Multiplier, which tells you how much cost of upgrade tier differs from first tier. Next, Buildings for Upgrade, which tells you how many buildings of any type you need to unlock each tier of upgrade. And the Upgrade Base Cost, which tells you the cost of the first upgrades for each building. And then lastly, Upgrade Unlocked Tier an upgrade unlocked building, which is the data for unlocked buildings. If you are overwhelmed by these explanations, don't worry, that's natural for somebody who isn't senior scratch developer as me. After utilizing those lists, upgrades finally works. But wait a moment, what actually upgrades do? That's right, we need to write what things we buy actually do. We have 112 blocks left, so better use them wisely. Which means more lists. Ok, now you can actually see what buildings and upgrades do. Now, let's add golden cookie, a cookie which spawns periodically and grants you extra cookies per second for limited time. As you can see, we used all of 500 blocks, but worry not, we can remove blocks which add data to lists, which initialize lists with unalterable data. And now we can add particle cookie, which is created when big cookie is clicked. And of course, we are not going to use clones. Wrong! In this challenge, every block counts and clones for sure will take less blocks than pen stamping for such a simple task. Clones are the worst, but using them is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for this challenge. Wait, clicking cookie doesn't work. Particles clones prevent the cookie from being clicked. I hope you start to see why you should not use clones. Actually, this inspired me to give you Top 3 reasons not to use clones Clone limit You can have maximum 
301 clones at the same time, which is often insufficient. You can't access data of one clone outside of its scope, which means if you want to check, for example, nearest clone from your position, it wouldn't be possible unless you use lists to store their positions. But if you're doing that, why not simply render objects using an extension? Lack of control. For example, if you have bullet clone collide with target clone, if you have script that destroys both bullet and target when they collide each other, only one will be destroyed. On top of that, you can't even detect collisions between clones of same sprite. In conclusion, if you let Scratch handle everything itself, you will not get anywhere. Ok, let's get back to the game. So, particle clones are blocking the cookie from being clicked. The solution is to instead of using when sprite is clicked block, take advantage of the fact that cookie is a circle and use distance from mouse pointer combined with mouse click variable. We have 14 blocks left and I'll use them to fix bugs, slightly improve the animations and auto graphic effects so it doesn't trigger your OCD. Okay, it's finished, and now I have good thumbnail so I can clickbait people. Oh, and don't forget to love, favorite and follow. See ya.